Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we're going to be starting to discuss measurement. And when we're talking about measurement, we're talking about everything from area, perimeter, total surface area. Um, so we're looking at 2D objects, and then we're going to go on to 3D objects, and then we're going to look at volume as well. And then we're going to look at how we would scale things up and down. So it's a full thing with measurement, okay? But to start off nice and easily, we're going to start with area and perimeter of all the basic shapes. And you might, some of you might think it's a bit silly to start off with this, but I do find that some of my students, you kind of may have skipped some work or you may have skipped change classes or something like that. And some students, and I find some of them in matric even, don't know the basics. They don't know the basics of the areas and the perimeters of squares and circles and things. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start at the beginning and work our way through. Okay, so the square is special because all four sides are equal. Okay, we don't care about the rest. We don't care about the 90 degrees or anything else at the moment. All we care about is the fact that all four sides are equal in length. Okay, so the perimeter, therefore, is going to be very easy because if we call this S for side, then because all four sides are equal, and this is S, and this is S, and this is S, do you agree that the perimeter, and just in case you don't know, the perimeter is um, how long, how big the outer edge of the shape is. Okay, that's the perimeter, it's the length of the outer shape. Okay, in this case, it's these four sides here. These little squares here just show us that these are 90 degree angles, and those are telling us that all four sides are equal, so that's definitely a square. Right, so now the perimeter, therefore, is going to be four times s, which you can just write as 4s. Nice and easy here. Yeah? The area of any four-sided figure is always length times breadth, okay? But in this case, do you agree that if this was our length, we could replace it with an s, and if this was our breadth, we could replace that with an s, so therefore it is s squared. So the perimeter of a square is 4s, where s stands for side, and the area is s squared. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, so now we get to a rectangle. So the rectangle is interesting because it's finally got two sides that are different lengths. In other words, this side here is a different length to that side, and these are equal. So opposite sides are equal. So this side is equal to this side, and that side is equal to that side. So we're going to call this L and L, where we say L is the length, okay? And we're going to call this B, and B is the breadth. So then, do you agree the perimeter, which is the length around this object, is going to be L plus B plus L plus B. So it's L plus B plus L plus B, which could be written as L plus L is 2L, plus B plus B, plus B is 2B, or you could write it as 2L plus B, where we've taken out the common factor. Do you see that? We've taken out the common factor of 2. You don't need to. I'm just showing you what can be done. The area is always, when you've got four-sided fingers and they've got 90-degree angles, the area is always on one side multiplied by the other side. So therefore, this is just length times breadth. Nice and easy here. Length times breadth. Right, let's talk triangle. Okay, so the official thing for a triangle, okay, first of all, if this is a base, then we could call this A and we could call that length C, okay? Then do you agree, this is like a practical example of this, then do you agree that I could say that the perimeter is just going to be the sum of all three sides. So it is just going to be A plus B plus C. A plus B plus C. Okay, that's it. It is just the sum of all three 
website. So you guys should know all this. Like I said, all I'm doing at the moment is I'm revising to make sure you guys do know this for when we carry on with these questions. OK, so let's move on. The area is equal to now. Let me just show you something. If I take, let's pretend that this is a rectangle. Okay, that's a rectangle, right? This side is equal to this side, and this is, oh, it's very small. Let me make it bigger. Um, okay, let's draw it bigger. And I'll show you where the rectangle, I mean, the triangle formula comes from. This is a rectangle, right? So, therefore, we could say that this is parallel to this, and this is parallel to this, and this is perpendicular, and that's perpendicular. Okay, that is a rectangle. If I now ask you for the area of the slit rectangle, the area of the rectangle is going to be length times breadth, right? But do you agree that I could also write this if I said that this was the base? of the rectangle and then this year would be the height so i could also write the area as equal to base times height do you agree like if i stand in the rectangle up on its edge then do you agree that if i took a line across as in other words i drew a diagonal and then I erase, now I don't know if it'll let me do this, but we'll try. Yeah, it's letting me do it. Okay, so we erase the other bit. Okay, do you agree I've got a, now I've got a triangle and the area is going to be a base times the height times a half because half the rectangle has disappeared. Right, so that is where the formula for the area of a triangle comes from. And it doesn't matter if we just draw it back, sorry, if we just draw it back, it doesn't matter if my triangle is this one or that what they found out is that if my triangle is this, okay, or if the triangle looks like this. The point is that if I say that that is the height, okay, if that height remains constant and the base remains constant, then the area of these triangles will all be the same and they'll all be half base times height. So that's where the rule of a half base times height comes in. And it doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter if the perpendicular height can only be found outside the triangle. It's still going to give you that area. Look there. If I do this, there's my rectangle, right? So now, if I take this and this, that'll be half the rectangle, and this would be the other half of the rectangle. That's just the way it works. It's always going to work like that. So if we had to do an example, let's just erase some stuff here. So if we had to look at this example, the second part of this page, the second drawing on this page. Okay. The area is going to be a half. The base is 14. Oh, sorry. The base is 14 multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is 10, which is going to be 7 times by 10, which is 70 um, units. In this case, it is meters. And remember that your area is always measured in meters or units squared. So in this case, it's meters squared. There we go. Right, now let's look at the trapezium. The trapezium is an interesting fellow. First of all, if we want to look at the perimeter, the perimeter is going to be the same type of thing as the triangle. We're going to go, it's just the sum of all the sides. That's all it is. We can't do anything else with that. Just the sum of all the sides, right? But now, but now let's look at the area. Do you agree that I could break this up? Okay, and you'd have 
a triangle, you'd have a rectangle, and you'd have a triangle again, okay? And this bit here would be equal to, well, that bit there, we don't know what it is, but because that bit there is A, and this bit plus that bit must be equal to B minus A, but we don't know how much it is. So we could break this up into triangles if we knew the length of this bit and this bit, but we don't. So the formula is for area of a trapezium if you cannot break it up into triangles. And I'm not saying that you must break it up into triangles. I just find that a lot of students um, actually forget what the area of a trapezium is. And what it is, is half, oh, sorry. It's half times the height times the sum of the parallel sides. Okay, in other words, what they're doing is they're taking this and they're realizing that A, you need to add the B bit to this to get to the area. Okay, in other words, they're saying half the height, okay, times this little bit plus that whole bit plus this little bit will give you the area of the trapezium. It's half the base um, times the sum of the parallel sides, okay? Now, I find a lot of children or a lot of students struggle with that. They really do struggle. So, I would say that if you're given enough information, feel free to break this up into triangles and squares and rectangles. I don't have a problem with that. But if you could try and memorize it, it's a very good idea. So, let's just use an example. If the whole of this is eight, and this is five, and let's just make this four, then would it be a half times by four times by eight plus five, which is two times eight plus five is 13, which is 26 units squared. Okay, get it. Right, let's continue. Parallelogram is really easy because what you can actually do, which is quite cool, is, okay, first, par the, first of all, the, <laughs> the perimeter, again, you could think of it as the sum of all the sides, okay? But do you agree that this side here is equal to that side, so that's six centimeters? And this side here is equal to that side there, which is seven centimeters. So therefore we could say that actually the perimeter is equal to two times the base times by two times the, it's called the slant height. The slant height is actually this angle here, this line here, the length of the slanted side. Okay, you get it. So that is the slant height. Or just the sum of all the sides, it's fine. The area, as I was about to say, is actually very cool because what you can realize is that you can take this triangle here and you can draw it over here. And then what happens is that the seven centimeters is from here to here. And then all that you have is a, is a rectangle. So the area is just the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. And this line here just means perpendicular. So that is all that is happening there, is that it's the area multiplied by the perpendicular height. So in this case, it would be seven times by four, which is 28 centimeters squared. And like I said, always be careful of your units. Okay, now a circle. Okay, so the circle is the perimeter 
is 2 pi r, which is also known as pi d, where d is the diameter and r is the radius, and pi is obviously a constant. The area is pi r squared. Now, also, again, I find a lot of my students get confused and struggle between remembering which of these two equations is area and which is perimeter. And what I tell them is remember that the unit for area is always squared, which means the formula has to have that square in it. So therefore, this has to be area because it's squared as well. Right, now let's talk about total surface area of right prisms and cylinders. So what do I mean by right prism? A right prism is a solid that has a polygon, that's a many-sided figure, many-sided figure. So it has a polygon as its base, but it's got vertical sides that are perpendicular to the base. That's what the right mean. The prism is to do with the fact that it's a polygon as a base. And the fact that it's a right prism is because the lines are vertical, okay? The base is, the sides are vertical to the base. So, like I said, a triangular prism has obviously got a triangular base and a rectangular prism obviously has a rectangular base. So, obviously your surface area, now I'd be talking about prisms and cones and all sorts of things. We're talking about three-dimensional objects, okay? So the surface area is the total area of the exposed or outer surfaces of the prism. So if we wanted to, we could unfold the prism and that sometimes makes it easier for us to work out the surface area. So let's say we've got a cube over here, okay? This is a cube. So you've got a cube with 10 by 5 by 6, okay? So this length here from left to right is 10 meters. 5 meters is as it goes back and 6 meters as it goes up. So what we can do, this is called the object's net, okay? In other words, it's what do we, if we open this up, what would it look like? That is called object's net. And you can see that if you look at this net, what's nice is they've changed the colors. So you can see that this is a six, and this is a six, and that's a six, okay? And this is one of the sides, okay? So now let's have a look at the colors aren't exactly perfect, but we'll work through it. So, uh, okay. So now, this is 10, Okay, so then let's say, okay, let's say that this is the bottom. Instead of it being the bottom, the front, we're going to call this the bottom. That says the bottom, the bottom. Okay, and what we're doing is we're taking this side here and we're flipping it down and we're taking this side here and we're flipping it down sideways, okay? So, and then this we're going to flip down as well and we're going to flip that down. So then what happens is you will end up with a top as well. So we're going to flip this down twice. So what we're doing is this, oh, let me change color. This bit here is going to be the top, okay? This here, the front bit, which I'm going to change to highlight it, this here is the front bit, is going to be the front over there. Okay, you with me? Um, and then we've got the red is the bottom. This bit, uh, yeah, that there is the bottom. You with me? And then finally, let me just change the pen and change to green. The stuff at the back is this back bit here, okay? So we flipped it open where this is the back, this is the bottom, and then these two have flipped up, dush, dush, okay, in the front. Then do you see the length of every one of these is 10 meters, okay? So that's 10 meters, that's 10 meters, that's 10 meters, and that's 10 meters. And then you can see that the sides are going to have 5 meters here, and you're going to have 6 meters up, okay? Oh, I don't like this net at all. Okay, let me try again. Uh, <clears throat> hang on, just a minute, erase all ink. 
They're saying that this is the top front. Top front. It's still wrong. This is supposed to be six meters. And this is supposed to be five meters. Okay, because, okay, let me show you. Here is your net, right? Yeah, I mean, not your net, your cube. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this sheet here and we're going to flip it out like this. Okay, so now it's flipped out like that. So now, do you agree that that's not there anymore? Okay, right? Then we're going to take the back bit and flip that out. Okay, so that's now flipped out. So this is this bit here that's flipped out. So that is no longer there. Right? Then we're going to flip this one out like this. Okay, that's a really bad drawing, but you get the gist. Okay, that's this one. Oh, look, it's going to look like that. That's why. Okay, so that's going to look like that. And then this is gone. But now remember that there was a lid. Okay, there's a lid here still. Okay, so now what we need to do is flip the lid down. So therefore, we're going to flip this lid down so it goes like this. That's this bit. And then we're flipping this bit down. So then we get another bit. Okay. And then this is no longer there because it's been flipped down. Okay, with me. So do you agree that this bit here was the back? This is the bottom. This is the front. And this is the top. And this was the left hand side, left. And this is the right hand side. Okay, now do you agree also that that means that all of these are 10, 10, 10, 10, and 10, the length of this. These are all 10. Okay, they've said that this base here, this is 5. Okay, so therefore we know that, let's make it blue, this is 5. And that is five, but that means that this top bit here is five as well, and this top bit here is five, because that used to fit. That's the same as this. That that there is the same as that. Okay, so those are five, and then everything else is going to be six. Okay, do you get it? So let's go purple. This bit here was now this bit. So that's six. Okay. This bit here is six. Oh, this bit here is five as well. This is six. This is six. This is six. Um, this is six. That's six. Okay. And then, sorry, I left out one. This bit here is also five because it's the top end of that, and that's also five. So now, so forget about this horrible drawing. So now, do you see that we could actually got one, two, three, four, five, six rectangles? So then it's really easy to find the total surface area. So the total surface area is going to be, that's 10 times six, right? That's 10 times six. So we're going to go two times 10 times six. I'm just going to tick this one and this one. Then we've got, this is 10 times 5 and that's 10 times 5. So it's plus 2 times 10 times 5, right? So now we've got those two. And then we've got plus these two, the two sides, 2 times 5 times 6. Well, what are you doing? We're doing front and back, top and bottom and left and right. That's what we're doing here, which in this case would be 2 times 60 plus 2 times 50 plus 2 times 30, which is going to be 120 plus 100 plus 60. That's 220, that's 280. So it's 280 and this is meters. That's the total surface area. Okay, so in other words, if I said to you how, what is, and it's squared. Okay, so if I said to you what, 
amount of material am I going to need to make this prism? I would need 280 square meters of material. That's what I need. I need 280 square meters of material. Right, so now I haven't finished because when we've got prisms, we don't talk only about surface area and perimeter, we talk about volume. And the volume is always the area of the base multiplied by the perpendicular height, if it's a right prism. So the area of the base in this case is gonna be length times breadth, and then we times it by the height, so that is the formula that we have, length times breadth times height. So the volume in this case is going to be 10 times 5 times 6. 5 times 6 is 30, so it's 300 meters cubed. Remember the volume is always cubed because of the fat Y, because it is three measurements, measurements that will be multiplied together. Right. Let's go on. Okay, so the cube is exactly the same thing as this one, except for the fact that all four sides are equal. So that makes it really easy, okay? So in other words, I could say, well, if that's the case, this one could be, let's say the front. Okay. Then this one, could be the top, and this is the top as well, because it's turned over. And this one would be the left-hand side, and that would be the left-hand side. Okay, but do you see this is really easy? Because the fact that it all four sides are equal, it's going to be side squared. But how many are them? One, two, three, four, five, six. So therefore, we can say the total surface area is going to be six side squared. Okay, not too difficult. Hey, you just need to think it out a bit carefully. Right, now let's move on to the volume. The volume, remember, is always the area of the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. Okay, so what is the area, the area is side squared, multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is side, which is going to be side cubed. So there we go. Now we have the volume, which is side cubed. Now we're moving on to the triangular prism. Now remember we said that this is a right prism. So it's got a triangular base, okay, which we're putting on the side here so we can see it. And remember that on the other side, there is also a triangular base. This is what it looks like. Hang on, let me just erase some stuff here and then redraw it and I'll redraw it in the appropriate colors. Hang on. First, let me just dot it here. Okay, so that triangle is that triangle. This triangle here is this triangle, which means that one of these sides has to be so then let's have a look at it. We've got rectangle one, which is eight by five. So this is rectangle one, the one at the bottom. Okay. Rectangle two is 10 um, and five. So therefore this over here is rectangle two, which leaves nine by five to be the rectangle three. So this is rectangle three. Okay, so it doesn't matter which side you attach the triangle to because it's going to work no matter what. So if you touch this rectangle to here, then this is going to be nine centimeters, but then that is going to be eight centimeters. Okay, so if we're looking at total surface area, we're looking at three rectangles plus two triangles, right? 
which equals, okay, first of all, yeah, we've only got this one, which is this one here, which is eight by five. So that's just eight times five. Plus, then we've got this one here, which is 10 by five. So it's 10 by five. Plus, let me just erase. Okay, now we've got the third rectangle. I just want to write in where we're at. Now we've got the third rectangle, which is this one over here, which is going to be 10. No, it's not. It's going to be 5 by 9. It's going to be 5 by 9. So it's going to be 5 by 9. Plus we've got two triangles, which are going to be a half times by eight times by nine times by eight times by nine so eight times five is 40 plus 10 times five is 50 plus five times nine is 45 plus eight times nine is 72 divided by two is 36 which is going to be 90 135 165, 171. So this is 171 centimeters squared. That is a total surface area. It is 171 centimeters squared. Now let's talk about the volume. Volume. Okay, now remember the volume is always the area of the base multiplied by the perpendicular height, okay? So that in this case, the base, because it's a triangular prism, is this triangle, which is going to be a half times by nine times by eight times by the perpendicular height, which in this case is five, five. Okay, so you need to remember that when you're working these things out, you can't just decide that you're going to use the this rectangle at the bottom here. You can't just go, oh, well, I'm going to use this rectangle here as my base because then you're not taking into account the fact that this is a triangle. So therefore, you have to, have to, have to use the one that's the anomaly, the one that's different. The fact that you have got um, a triangle as one of the sides means we have to use that as a base and then the rest is the perpendicular height. So then we can work this out. It's a half, nine times 80 is 72 multiplied by five, which is 36 multiplied by five. Six fives are 30, six three, five threes are 15, 16, 18, 180 centimeters cubed. There you go. Centimeters cubed. Right, cylinder. Okay, so the cylinder is very cool because if you think about a cylinder, it's actually quite an easy concept, okay? If you take a piece of paper, okay, and you roll it up this way, so you roll it up that way, you will end up with the shape of a cylinder. So let's pretend this is one side of the piece of paper that's over there. You would roll it up so that this side joins onto it, okay? Then what you have is a cylinder. So basically, the this part of the cylinder, the outer part of the cylinder is really a rectangle, right? Do you agree? With this length here being the equivalent of the circumference, which is 2 pi r. And this length here is obviously its height. Okay. So then it makes life a little bit easier because the top, if they're both, if it's an enclosed cylinder, the top and bottom are just circles. So then life gets really, really easy. So we can say, well, the total surface area, therefore, is going to be two times the area of a circle plus the area of the rectangle, right? So two times the circle of area is going to be two times two pi r plus the area of the rectangle. Now what's important is to realize that that base there is two pi r because it's the circumference of the circle, in which case this is wrong by the way, this is pi r squared. Oh, completely wrote that. 
this is pi r squared, and then this is 2 pi r times by the height of h, okay, which is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, and that is a total surface area. Okay, now let's look at the volume. The volume is always the area of the base times by the perpendicular height. So again, if you look at this, you can see that this is a circle. So therefore, the circle is the base and its perpendicular height is the height of the cylinder, which is going to be pi r squared. Why pi r squared? Because this is a circle. So that area of the base is a circle, so it's pi r squared multiplied by the perpendicular height. So that becomes pi r squared h. Right, so I've been talking about total surface area and I've been doing the volumes as well. But I needed to just, before we finish for today, confirm what the definition of a volume is. The volume is the three-dimensional space that the object occupies. Okay, it's a three-dimensional space that the object occupies. And obviously the volume of a right prism, as I showed you, is you use calculated by calculate the multiplying the area of the base times by the height. So now we've done these, but we haven't done proper examples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to do a proper example. So yeah, we're going to work out the total surface area and we're going to work out the volume using these numbers. Okay, so first let's work out the total surface area. So do you agree? we got two of these five times fours, okay? So we got, because we've got one year and one year. Let me just draw in the little lines so that you can see. Oh, let me just do it in a different color. Okay. There you go. So we've got one in the front and one in the back. So it's going to be two times five times four. Plus we have got two of these sides, this one here and the other one. So it's two times four times eight. Plus we have got two of the top and bottom, which is going to be eight times by five. So it's two times eight times by five, which gives me two times 20 plus two times 32 plus two times 40 which equals 40 plus 64 plus 80. That's 144, that's 184 centimeters squared. So the total surface area is 184 centimeters squared. Now let's do volume. Volume is pretty easy. It is length times breadth times height. And yeah, they're interchangeable, so it doesn't make a difference. So it's gonna be five times four, times 8, 5 times 4 is 20, times by 8 is 160 centimeters cubed. Right, I think grade 10, we're going to stop there for today. We've learned quite a lot and we will continue on Monday next week where we will continue with measurement. Have a great day.